So higher goals here. And we're gonna practice leap accuracy. Get you feeling confident singing wide melodic leaps. Be able to hit them reliably on target. And one of the most important ways to improve musicianship in general, but specifically become a more accurate singer, is to make yourself conscious where each type of leap occurs within the context of the key. So, imagine the major scale arrayed before you stepwise. First thing you should notice is that the major scale isn't symmetrical. If whole steps or major seconds between the first three notes, one and two, two and three, then a half step or a minor second between three and four, you get whole steps again between the last four notes, four to five, five to six, six to seven, then one more half step between seven and one. And this asymmetry means that leaps over the same number of scale degrees may well yield a different melodic distance. For example, one to three is a major third, but two to four is a minor third, a half step narrower. One to four is a perfect fourth. A four to seven is an augmented fourth. A half step wider. And you can see the underlying structure of the major scale is what's responsible for these differences. And while you may well be able to intuit your way around, it's important to study this pattern so you can make bold, deliberate leaps informed by conscious knowing. So let's do the work. Practice the leap while explicitly making the brain aware of the distance. Starting with the thirds, which as we alluded to earlier, come in two varieties in the major key. The major third, a bright, happy sounding interval. And the minor third, which is dark and somber. And first we'll sing these with the piano, then a cappella to make sure you really got it. Like this. One, three, major third. One, three, major third. And now you sing. Acapella. And now we move to two, four, minor, third. Acapella. Three, five, minor, third. Four, six, major, third. Just you. Five, seven, major, third. Six, one, minor, third. And seven, two, minor third. And that is all of the thirds in a major key. Now summarize it in your mind. You have major thirds from one to three, four to six, and five to seven. The rest are minor thirds. Two to four, three to five, six to one, seven to two. Okay, let's move ahead to the fourths, of which there's two varieties. There's the perfect fourth, a triumphant sounding interval, and the augmented fourth, which is tense, dissonant, and somewhat mischievous. And now let's sing them, starting with one, four, the perfect fourth. Acapella. Two, five, perfect fourth. Three, 
1-800-636-8836. Perfect fourth. For sev, augmented, or og, fourth. Five, one, perfect fourth. Six, two, perfect fourth. Finally, sev, three, perfect fourth. And this is an easy one to summarize. So they're all perfect fourths. Except for four to seven, which is augmented. And now moving on to the fifths, which also come in the perfect variety. Extraordinarily pure, stable sound. Or a semitone narrower, diminished, which is actually the same musical distance as the augmented fourth. So sounds qualitatively the same. Okay, time to sing. One, five, perfect fifth. And a cappella. Two, six, perfect fifth. Three, seven, perfect fifth. Four, one, perfect fifth. Five, two, perfect fifth. Six, three, perfect fifth. Seven, four, diminished or dim fifth. And that's all the fifths. Again, an easy category to summarize. They're all perfect, except for seven to four, which is diminished. It might help to notice that in the case of the fourths, it was four to seven. That was the unusual interval, augmented. And in the fifths, it was seven to four. Same scale degrees, but flipped, where we find the diminished fifth. This is because fourths and fifths are inversions. Flip one upside down, and you get the other. And so you'll always have a kind of parity of pattern between inverted intervals, where the one changes size, so must the other. Helpful to remember this as we move on to the sixths, which is an inversion of thirds. So you should already have the expectation that there's going to be one type of sixth where the upper note is one, four, and five, and a different type of sixth where the upper note is two, three, six, and seven, reflecting the pattern of what we found in the thirds. The other thing to note is that across inversions, you flip quality. Augmented goes to diminished, major goes to minor. So, one to three, we said was a major third. Inverted, three to one. That must be a minor sixth. Now, if you find this a helpful way to remember where the intervals change quality, great. But if it's too much to think about, just brute force it. Interval class by interval class. Speaking of which, the sixth come in two flavors. Major pastoral, sweet C sounding interval, and minor, dark, and mournful. All right, let's give them a sing. One, six, major sixth. Acapella. Two, seven, 
Major Sixth. Three one, minor sixth. Four two, major sixth. Five three, major sixth. Six four, minor sixth. And seven five, minor sixth. And summarize one, two, four, and five. It's where you find your major sixth, and from three, six, and seven, it's where you get your minor sixth, and on to the sevenths, which also come in the major minor dichotomy. Major sevenths are certainly a dissonant interval. They can feel floating, melancholic, or biting and acerbic, depending on context. And there's the minor. With a forceful, insistent quality. And now we sing, starting with one sev major seventh. A cappella. To one minor seventh. Three, two, minor seventh. Four, three, major seventh. Five, four, minor seventh. Six five minor seventh. And seven six minor seventh. Excellent. And recap it. Major sevenths had one and four. The rest. Minor sevenths. And now the last leap we're going to look at is the octave. And since we're jumping from the note to itself, an octave above probably won't come as a surprise that this gives you the same interval distance everywhere. The perfect octave. The purest, most consonant sounding leap there is. And now we sing him one, one, perfect octave. Capella. Two, two, perfect octave. Three, three. Four to four. Five, five. Six, six. And sev to sev.
Okay, great work. You've sung every single melodic leap that exists in the major key. Well, within the octave anyway. And you can actually think of every leap wider than the octave as a compound interval. The octave plus one of the narrower intervals. Impressive as a bit of musical conquest, but also one of the most important things you can master for tightening up your leap accuracy. And for lots more on improving your intonation as well as perfecting every aspect of vocal technique, check out V60, my comprehensive vocal training program. It's over a thousand tracks and 30 hours of instruction and exercises. That's all for now. I'm Sahara Gold. I'll see you next time.